Uh, this is day two of my attempt to activate uh, Dingo Ridge. And if you've ever been to this Dingo Ridge here in Victoria, which is um, VK3 Victor Charlie 028, you're probably laughing at me about that. It's not a particularly challenging summit. Um, no worries, but I'd left it later in the day and I trusted Google and I shouldn't have done that. Yeah. Instead, what I should have done was trusted the reviews from other hams who've been and done this particular summit before. VK3 ZPF's got a number of blog reports on this summit and if I had to just taken his advice, I probably would have been able to get up there yesterday. But anyway, I feel like he had lots of dead ends, I had private property, so I didn't make it. So today, let's get up to Dingo Ridge. I'm going to try and come in the back way or the, the southern entrance. Who knows what we've got in store for us. All right, let's go to the map. So today we're coming in from the south. When you come in from the south, You've got a few choices, Brew Road and Garfield North Road. You can make your way up into the bottom of where that Bunyip Stake Park boundary is. Now there's a few roads off the end here that I want to check out. The first one we're going to have a look at is Gregory Road. I want to find out if Gregory Road connects to the walking tracks. Gregory Road's not a long road, but when you get to the end of it, you're going to hit a private property gate. All right, today's not the day to try to walk through private property, so I'll give that a miss. Now I'm going to head up Garfield North Road. The end of that looks like there's a little bit of private property in between the end of the road and the start of the walking tracks. All right, so I'm not going to chance that today. I'm going to turn around. Let's make our way down to Pettigrew Road. Here it is, Pettigrew Road. Doesn't show on this map, but it looks like there might be a walking track going up that ridge line. So this is the end of Pettigrew Road. I actually reckon it's possible that that might get through there. Um, up to Dingo Ridge, but I'm not going to chance it today. So I'm going to go around the back now. All right, now we're heading back to where Tainong North Road meets up with Lupton's track. Park the car up off the road, it's the start of the trailhead, you can't drive any further but it looks like you've got a walk of about 5 kilometres from here. The maps show this is a track that takes around about uh, an hour and a bit to walk. It's around about 5 kilometres each way. I'll upload the GPX to the SOTA website once I'm done. I threw the drone up to have a quick look. Looks like this is going to be a pretty easy to navigate track. As you can see from the uh, drone footage, that track weaves its way up those ridge lines. Dingo Ridge is the lump up on the left on the horizon. In this footage, it sort of looks a little bit further away than it is. Alright, let's choose some gear for this little walk. Got my Crossfire DG3 pack here. It's probably a bit big for this one. Let's pull out this uh, folding chair. They're nice and lightweight, but they're, uh, they're great. They're great when you want to sit around up at the top and be comfortable. I've got my spider beam 10 meter collapsible pole. A few bits and pieces in there. As far as radio gear goes, I've got all my gear uh, packed in these uh, AOS waterproof bags these days. Unfortunately, it's still about six kilos, but uh, I'm gonna leave it about that weight for the time being. It's not all about, you know, uh, minimizing your weight all the time. It's got a little bit of everything in there. All right, as is usual, at the start of any track in Victoria, you've got a million uh, warning signs telling you basically what you're not allowed to do. 
a few extra ones at the start of this track. I'm not going to spend too much time looking at those. Let's make a move. I think I'm about halfway. I've just reached the intersection of Avard's track and Lupton track. So I'd better just stop here and rearrange my boots. I've got brand new boots on today. A bit, let's tighten them up so uh, I can enjoy the rest of the trip. I can hear some voices. Hey there. Nice day for it. <laughs> it's hot all my yeah. <laughs> so I've just started using workwear pants instead of hiking pants. I'll tell you the best thing about workwear pants, knee pads. Fantastic. As you can see, um, these sort of conditions are pretty consistent with what most of the track's been like. So it's a fairly um, gentle gradient. I haven't seen much in the way of wildlife yet. Although it does have the feel with these ferns that uh, there might be a leech or two around. I haven't seen one yet, but uh, anyway, if I uh, see any, I'll let you know. So this is about 4 k's in, I haven't got far to go now, probably about 15 minutes, but my, uh, I got my mobile phone in my pocket and Ham Alert and Parks and Peaks has been buzzing and I got a bad feeling by the time I get to the peak and set up they might have moved on, but it looks to me like uh, there must be 3 or 4 other people out doing sodas today. So I'm going to push a bit harder to get up there and hopefully we can get up and get some summit to summits. hundred meters off bit of a junction in the road up there that'll be the uh, peak or the summit and the uh, I'm well within the activation zone and there goes ham alert again another VK7 let's get this uh, show on the road all right so in a bit of a rush to get all the gear set up uh, forgot to hit record on the camera, so I've missed about the first minute of the QSOs. So I'm just going to splice it in uh, halfway through the conversation with uh, VK3 NDG, which is Dan. I think you'll be my first contact for the day and uh, first summit to summit for the day, over. Oh, awesome. I, uh, I uh, really enjoy your videos. I watched the one that uh, Wilson's from <laughs> um, about a week ago uh, and really enjoyed it. So, um, yeah, look forward to watching this video. And mm. uh, But, yeah, great signal here. I can hear you really well. Uh, yeah, five, 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 six for me, over. Mm -hmm. uh, receiver, have you got plans on uh, doing any other uh, frequencies? Yeah, 
Roger that, mate. 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 Roger
it's not even going to reach halfway up those trees so there really was no point oh, i got my little um, gme spk07 which i normally i just plug that in the back and i've got a couple of uh bits of um velcro which i just stick it on there but anyway for now let's put it back in there over here i've got my manual tuner connected to an ugly balance now these fit nicely on top of there but let's wind up my antenna so today i've got this thing set up on my uh, 10 meter spider beam just attached to the uh, track sign there and up she goes off into the bush over there so let's bring this down I've got a little loop at about the right height in my antenna wire there so that that always attaches to the top of my mast at the right height. It's all in the uh, blackberry bushes now. But then I'm going to wind this onto my little bit of a uh, cutting board here just to uh, make sure that I wind it up because as we know wires are always a nightmare if, once they get tangled. So I'll just try to do my best. Here we go, and I've gone and done it to get to not get tangled in too many bushes. We'll just wind that around so that it all holds together nicely, it doesn't fall apart. And we're good to go. That is it. Got my little trusty chair in there. Didn't pull that out today. I was happy just to roll around in the mud. Didn't need my guy ropes today because I had the pole to attach to it. Lastly, I'll disconnect my little rubber uh, grunt straps from the post. Look at that, ready to go. This can all go back into the bag. Zip that up. That's everything in there, that's fine. Yep. Actually, for today's walk back, I'm just going to attach my antenna to the side of that pack. Sometimes I carry it, but that'll do today. All right, so let's wrap that up. Dingo Ridge, that's a great day out. As far as the activation goes, the activation zone, really easy, easy to set up. You can set up on the posts, you can attach your poles to posts. If you wanted to throw lines in trees, you could do that as well. The track to get up there, really easy to follow, five kilometre walk. You know what, if you wanted to take a bike on that track, and I'm pretty sure a couple of other uh, ham users have done that, no problems at all. Easy to ride up there. I think the drone footage gives you a pretty good look at the topography, so you get a good idea of what you're in for. I can't answer any of the questions about whether or not you can get up from those uh, roads down south, but certainly that Lupton's track, no worries at all. Uh, the other interesting news is me and Michelle went and did a couple of activations in the Grampians. Uh, so I've got some videos in production at the moment, they'll be out real soon. Michelle's back, Southern Grampians. I actually reckon that one's going to make a really interesting video as well. So hopefully you come back to have a look at that. Uh, signing off for now, we'll catch you next time.